Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Patch Notes video. So, yeah. excuse me, Blah. so I've had a semi-decently long day, um, and I've heard, luckily this Patch Notes isn't long, and we can get through this quickly because I have to do a lot of other stuff gaming related today. So anyway, hi, happy post-10 year. Oh yeah, it's 10 years of League of Legends, hooray. Uh, did you catch the team's stream? No, I didn't. We loved getting to answer your questions. Oh, I'm sure you did, you big cocked motherfuckers. Riot has the biggest dick right now because of all the stuff they're releasing. Like, their cock in this industry is huge. They're releasing a fighting game, mobile games, um, an FPS, like, a card game. Their dick is absolutely massive, and they're a game that has survived for 10 years and is still going strong and is the, I'd like to say, maybe the number one game in the world played. Because I know it surpassed Fortnite on Twitch, but Twitch doesn't mean everything. But anyway, one of the most played games in the world. And it's still going strong for 10 fucking years, and hopefully a lot more. So anyway, uh, thank you for interacting with us on that very special day. I want Morello back, man. Morello made the, the patch interesting when I used to see it, before I even started streaming. Morello was fucking beating Cassidy with a stick and reworking Rise five times. But anyway, uh, we hope you enjoyed all the amazing things coming to League soon, including the preseason changes, which I'm not going to go over here. I already did a reaction of the initial changes, but we'll go over them when, you know, they get released with the patch. <clears throat> However, uh, we've been alluding for the past couple patches preseason. Uh, the bulk of our time is going into preparing for the rise of the elements. <laughs> but some notable work is going into this patch. It includes follow-ups to changes that received bigger changes in 9.20. So we're just getting a touch-up patch, basically. They're just touching up any outliers from last patch. Because last patch had a couple of big things. You know, Garen, Shaco... I think it was Victor. I, I haven't seen Victor, but we'll get into that, hopefully, if they mention him here. Uh, from all the past, present, and future writers of Patch Notes, and me, thanks for making the last 10 years awesome. And thank you, all the people who watch me on YouTube, the, the fucking minority few, the like seven people, sometimes, if I'm lucky. Here's to another 10 of dumb jokes, obscure references, and control F, no results. Alright, so Patch Highlights, we're not gonna get into. Alright, Skins. So these are the Halloween skins. We have Bewitching Sexy MF, which is actually a pretty decent skin. Prestige Edition Sexy Tits, which is cool. I don't think another AD needs a Prestige skin, but I mean, in all of Riot's high glory, they thought to give it to another fucking AD, which I don't understand. We have Caitlyn, Kaisa, MF at this point. So that's three. Caitlyn, Kaisa, MF. Whatever, that's three. That's three. That's two too many. Anyway, uh, which is Brew Blitzcrank, which I think is actually a pretty alright skin. Count Castadin, which is an okay skin as well. I don't think it's too good, but whatever. And then Anniversary, a free skin going on that you could get right now if you play for 11 days and log in and play at least one game a day. So there's that. I think the skin is decent. I mean, it's more thematically oriented than effects oriented, so I really like effect eff eh, effect heavy skins. Themes are okay, like sometimes the theme will get you, get me hard, but like this is like a 1350 basically. That's all this is. It's not a legendary, I don't believe. By the way, you get a free legendary if you go to day 10, so you know, keep that in mind. Anyway, moving on to the actual changes. Garen. What do I think of Garen? I have mixed feelings. Now, let me preface this whole patch uh, review by saying I've barely played Summoner's Rift, like, at all. Usually, I'm out here playing League every day, especially with an event that's going on. But I haven't been, because I've been busy and I've been trying to ground t grind out TFT, which, after, this is the last patch that this will be available. But once I get this, I'll play Rift again. Uh, however... I have not played Summer Drift that much. That being said, I have played it a little bit, and I'll tell you the changes I've seen. So, Garen. The one main thing, I think the Garen 
uh, mini rework is good, except the fact that he rushes um, Trinity. I don't like champions that get items that just have a stat that they don't use, and for Garen it's Sheen. I mean, don't get me wrong, Trinity is good on Garen. It's not bad. But it just pet peeves me that the most op- well, I don't know if it's the most optimal, but the most used and perhaps the most optimal choice on Garen right now is something that he doesn't even take full advantage of. But, I mean, I'm just gonna come out and say, I think he might be a little broken. Because of the fact that he can use an item that doesn't benefit him entirely, but still makes it viable, means there's something wrong. There's something fucking wrong. However, I am a Garen player. I like Garen. I feel he's very linear and easily kited, because aside from Flash queuing you, he has no way to get on you. Aside from speeding up. But again, if you CC him, he has no jump, teleport, dash, or anything. So he's a very linear, straightforward character, and I don't mind having some strength in him, especially from the fact that he's melee. I think melee champions like him need to be kind of in a stronger position just to survive in a lane that's ranged. Don't necessarily nerf ranged people because then they're already somewhat weak in certain situations outside of laning, but just make melees stronger and able to maybe deal with them better or just focus on all laning. Give, give melee something, don't take away from ranged people. However, moving back, our scope to Garen. I think he is a little bit on the stronger side, so I'm expecting to see nerfs. And E base damage per spin to And we're seeing nerfs. Is it anything crazy? Early game, yes. But early game, you're not really doing anything with the E. The E is basically once you get items, that's when it is um That's when it gets crazy. Once you get like attack speed and items, the the base damage isn't really anything. And they say it themselves. While this change might look large, we've kept the ratios the same. So again, once you get items, they're just trying to curve its damage early, which is fine. Garen shouldn't be an early oppressive champion that much. He should be a little bit. He's, he's an annoyance. Um, 0.8 to 0.2 damage ratio per spin, unchanged. Okay, yeah, so they're just nerfing base damage. This is fine. Again, I don't want to see any nerfs past this because I think melees need some strength above ranged. Kane, what do I think of Kane? I think Kane is generally in a very decent spot. He's very decently played. He's a good jungler. You go blue if you're trolling, but you have fun and can a good amount of the time win with blue Kane. And Rost is just really decent jungler. He doesn't overtly do a lot of damage. Even if he's fed, he's not that crazy. But he's decently fun. He brings a lot to a team because he has CC. He lives a decent amount. I think he's fine. And the fact that I think he's really good, like not great in OP, but like just a really good baseline jungler. I think if you're a jungler, you should be able to play Kane. Like e even if you're not, you should be able to play Kane because he's he's decent, he's baseline, he's good. So I think we're probably gonna see some nerfs if I'm guessing anything. Q damage increased. Wow, I was just completely wrong. Rost's modified damage ratios increased. Bonus damage to monsters decreased. Both of Kane's forms are underperforming. Wow, okay, I guess the statistics slapped me in the face. We're adjusting his damage to give a little bit more oomph. I mean, I guess he could be seen as a little weak because he's so baseline. Because, like, I feel like... What the fuck is this stupid song? Get this shit out of my face. Let me lower it. Alright, let me switch it. Alright, tea and sugar for back in time. Let's see how this song goes. Anyway, okay, so yeah, I mean, maybe that's the thing. When I say... A champion's like fed and they don't do too much maybe that's a signifier they'll be getting buffed but i i just expect the worst from riot so anyway how much are they buffing it they're actually buffing it a decent amount by 15 damage that's pretty good the rost modified damage is whatever it's 0.5 that's literally nothing and the bonus damage to monsters is lowered is that just for rost or is that for kane in general and it's only on q his q is getting touched on the most so basically, he's doing more damage to champions, less to jungle, which his jungle clear wasn't that crazy, aside from raptors, the cheese he does. I mean, hell, fuck it. It's a, it's a buff, aside from farming the jungle, but the jungle will probably be cleared at the same speed. So I think this is fine. Oh, my little maw. They haven't touched this child since, like, after they re-reverted him to his original state. So... 
Uh, I'm assuming we're gonna see buffs. If we don't see buffs, I'm actually gonna go fucking ape shit. Cause Kogma's in such a bad spot. He's supposed to be, and they said it too with his like his rework. He's supposed to be the late game hyper giga fuck you carry. Like if he gets to late, like he he's what Kale should have fucking been. If he gets to late, he is wiping people. If he gets protected. But um yeah, like Kogma before like the reworked Kogma that could attack five times a second. That was no joke. And the problem with it was, it was getting online too quickly. Like, you would be wiping the enemy team, pentakilling them at like 25 minutes. Maybe 20 if you're fed. And it was an issue. I mean, I want to see that Kagama back, but it was a fucking issue. So, we have to see nerfs, or er, not nerfs, sorry, buffs, because the fact that they reverted him to his original state, which needed a rework because it was kind of bad, means about time riot come on they were reverted into a state where he need to be changed and which they did and then they had to go back on so anyway right now Cogmos e does not feel rewarding to cast yeah it feels pretty shitty even when it lands successfully yeah because you mostly landed at the bare end and even then they just walk out of it it's like a fucking 0.5 second slow oh what the hell Ooh. okay um Rather than decreasing the cost of his E or other abilities early ranks, we're upping the value so that Kog'Maw's kit still has a risk reward. What the fuck is the risk reward in Kog'Maw's kit? What, you want to go in, be crazy, and then die to utilize the passive? My biggest pet peeve is Kog'Maw's passive. If they change that to something useful, I'll, I'll fucking almost main Kog'Maw. Like, you, you won't fucking even believe it. But god, Kog'Maw's passive is so useless. Well, I wouldn't say that. It's just so feeling bad. Like, you feel really bad. Because, like, if you're a good player and you don't die on Kog'Maw, you don't have a passive, which is terrible. It should be something to help him, I really think. It should be, like, a defensive slash helpful thing, not, a, like, a damaging one. Of course, I'd be fine with a damaging one. I'd be fine with anything. But anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. Um, so what are they doing? Base stats. They're rounding everything out to clean values. That's fine. Base damage of the Q is going up by 10. That literally does nothing. And the base damage on the E is going up. We might see a slight resurgence in AP Kogma. I doubt it, though. But realistically, these changes do absolutely fucking nothing. So, thank you, Riot. But they, they are small buffs. At the end of the day, they are small buffs. So it's whatever. Alright, Lulu. Uh, ironically, right after Kog, the fucking tag team duo. I think Lulu is actually crazy. I think a good Lulu can dictate the lane and the game. Because, like, if someone on the enemy team is fed, polymorphed. If your AD is popping off, send picks on them to pop off even more. If someone's dying, ult them. She has so much. I think Lulu is one of the best supports in the fucking game. And a competent Lulu can do so much. She can poke. She can peel. She can shield. And she can heal if she gets, um... Athenes. She can almost do fucking everything very well. And I think she's great. And I think she will, in my mind, be nerfed because she does everything so well. Just, it's hard to play her. A little bit. A little bit. It's hard to play her. Lulu's transition from mid game could be better. We want picks to offer more to fights and for players to make choices that are more worthwhile as Lulu scales. So the shield is going up later, which is good. Not by much, though, but. 20 is good and then the damage is going up by a lot so you're actually encouraged more to poke with this later game which is what you should not be doing i don't like this change but either way it's a buff so i again just got smacked in the face or i think it's completely opposite for me so but this change is a little stupid i think like why would you i mean again damage is is damage like at the end of the day let's say it's late game your whole team dies but the enemy team is low you can theoretically do better now but you should be using the E to shield, which got a tiny buff, which is good. They basically rounded out the same values, same shielding, and same damage, which actually is fine. So they, they just rounded Lulu out and made her more consistent. But that's pretty good. I like Lulu buffs. Lulu buff good. Alright, Maokai. I don't see this asshole ever, and I guess, again, because that's the state tanks are in, and they're just going to keep over buffing tanks until like we just see tanks, and then Vayne will get back into the meta. Um... But aside from that, specifically Maokai, I think Maokai is pretty weak. His ult never lands. You basically play Maokai. He's like the worst Malzahar to me. 
Malzahar, you play mid if you don't know how to mid and you want to like have an easy time. But Malzahar is pretty good. You play Maokai top if you have no clue what you're doing top, your team needs a tank, and you're stupid. And even then, you don't do that good, but you're Maokai. So it's like, it doesn't matter. Your R will sometimes hit, you'll root someone, you'll knock someone up, and you'll live a decent amount. I miss old Maokai ult. Old Maokai ult was like a lot better in my eyes than this stupid shit. But anyway, I'm expecting to see buffs to Maokai. Hopefully, eventually, they'll reword, revert his ult, his old ulti, because like, I hate his new one. Uh, Maokai is underperforming across all levels. Yeah, because he sucks ass. Uh, so his Q got bug fixed. And that bug fix actually hurts him. Because it damages enemies if he's like about to die. So this is worse for him. W. The mana cost went down. Maokai doesn't really necessarily have a problem with mana. But the damage, the base damage is going up by a good amount. 70 is, is decent. 50 to 70 is pretty good. Late game, same thing. 20 damage. And the R. The R root is going up no matter what. Which again is decent. It's just hard to land. But if you land it, you'll get a slightly better outcome. Even though the root doesn't really end up in anything besides an engage at the most. I mean, this this is fine. Is it enough to do anything to Maokai realistically? No. I think Maokai still sucks. But it's something. Yai, okay, I actually saw this on Cowsep's, like, YouTube. This change is really, really good for me, for Yi. Yi is actually good again, and I might actually play Yi jungle again, because Yi's actually a little crazy. So, basically, what what's happening is, let me read this. Phantom hits now proc double strike and apply double strike stacks. So Master Yi's Phantom Hit will now properly proc Double Strike and apply Double Strike Sacks. So basically, this means that Jinso's is extremely good for him, and it almost negates the Jinso's change from what it used to be. Like on every other champion, it's three, but technically Yi now gets it two, because his second auto counts as two autos. So his first auto is one, and his second auto is worth two, so it's three autos, and because the second one strikes twice, you're essentially autoing twice every other auto. It's really good. It's really good. It basically, it, it's just a really, really good quality of life. And they say it's a bug fix. Bullshit, it's a bug fix. You wanted it that way. But now that Yi sucks, they wanted to, you know, give him some power. But Yi will be super good because of this. Jinso's is a must-have item on him, in my opinion. But extremely good change here. Yi is really good. Okay, Pike. What do I think of Pike? I honestly think, after all the changes and the buffs to his ulti, I think his thematic is good. His whole thematic is, okay, you want to use your ulti to share the gold, and you want to execute someone. So it's more of like a fight-ending ult than a anything else ult. Like, you can't engage with it, you can't do anything besides execute someone. Because the damage it does is pretty pitiful now. However... If you do execute someone with it, you get a very big reward for doing so. You get gold, and your ally gets gold. And a shit ton of it, too. Full gold for both. So, I think out of all the other changes they did, I think he's in a really good spot. But, good doesn't necessarily mean good with Riot. So, I'm assuming to see nerfs. Because he definitely does not feel fucking weak. Even though I think he sucks dick, but... Anyway... Base health decreased, passive gray health from damage decreased. So he gains less health overall, which is actually a risky game they're playing because Pike can't build health. So taking away the little health he has is very strange to me. And then gray health becomes 25 to 50. That's a big ass nerf. That means his, um, his survivability and his health are lesser, which honestly is fine. I think actually that is one of the core problems of Pike. You go in, you get poked down, and then you just heal it all back up. But the fact that you have such low health kind of is the reason for that, but I think it was an insane amount. You could waste your whole combo on Pike, get him really low. He goes into the bush, comes out like three-fourths or more healthier of his health bar. And I'm like, okay, well, we just we shouldn't focus Pike. Because if we don't kill him, we've wasted everything. But I like this change. This makes it so like he's not going to completely get away unharmed. But he's not going to be fucked either. I think this is a very good change. I like it. 
Okay, Shaco, I heard the clown was crazy. I saw the clown was crazy. The clown's probably gonna get nerfed. He already got hot fixed. He's probably gonna get nerfed again. Uh, they're nerfing his boxes by 20 seconds. That's very good. Hopefully, he won't be able to get level 3 while the enemy jungle is still level 2 and bot lane's level 1. But, we'll see. Sona, just... <laughs> this is such a weird sentence they put. Follow-up quality of life change and passive bug fix for the adult woman. That makes her sound like a MILF, and I like that. So, research bar. Oh, this is really big. This is really big. So... When her passive power cord is ready, Sona's resource bar will change color based on the active aura. I'm pretty sure most people don't know, but the different auras on Sona's passive, once they get stacked all the way, do different things. Sona can reduce a person's damage by, like, I think at least 20% or more. Which was like, wait, what? Everyone, no matter what, always uses the Q passive, which your auto will do more damage. The W passive is when you auto the person does less damage and the e passive is when you auto they get slowed sometimes you don't notice the e most of the time you're never going to notice the w unless you know what it does and then q is the most noticeable one so that's the one everyone uses and everyone knows but i think this might probably won't but might change it and sona's abilities no longer fail to generate passive power cord stacks immediately after an empowered attack that's really good too general sona buffs i would call these buffs across the board i like these okay victor so of all the reworks i saw shaco was ridiculous i saw garen was pretty good it looks like victor fell through the cracks because again i haven't played too much summoner's rift but victor like i didn't see him at all and if i did i don't even remember him which means he's sucking ass so uh his health is getting rounded out all of his stats are getting rounded out no change basically his Q damage is upped by 10. It didn't buff his shield, wow, when it was augmented, that's crazy. The 10 damage doesn't matter. And the SFX are no longer noticeably louder when using it against more than one enemy. Wow, that's so stupid. Um, again, I can't really say much about Victor. I don't think if he's weak, this will do anything to help him. Hopefully he's in a decent spot and just needs a slight touch up. But again, I haven't seen him, so I don't know. Wiener. What do I think of Wiener? Again, he's like Kane. He's like, to me, if you are really, really stupid, don't play Kane, play Warwick. Warwick is simple, and the only real, like, mechanics he has is ulting, which is missed a lot anyway, even by good players. And I guess the E and Q, like, the E, you, you need to know when to use it, but even then, it's, like, obvious. And then the Q, if you hold it, you can travel with people, but you have to kind of anticipate when they're going to use a movement ability. And you'll follow them, but like... It's very easy. It's very easy to play Warwick. He's a very simple and good jungler. He's an easy jungler more than anything. He doesn't need a leash, but people still give him one. But, again, I guess because he's a baseline jungler, and he could be picked up by anyone, that means he's too... See, that's the thing. If they're easy, are they good? I don't know. I'm trying to think. When I think of Warwick now, I think of a guy who does decent-ass damage, unless he gets fed. But even when he's fed, he's not that crazy. Okay, wait, no. I'm going to go by the same logic I did before. If he's fed, he's not that crazy. He's getting buffed. All right, so let's see. Q. Um, damage ratio is going up with target max health. That's pretty fucking good. And the W bonus attack speed is getting omega buffed. Whew. That's extremely good. Early. Late game, it's the same, but early is good. And early, you want to feel really good on Warwick. This is fine. I like these. Just straight buffs. I think they don't make him crazy. They just make him a little bit better. Very good. Bug fixes, we're not going to cover. Skins, I talked about. And there's some nice chromos for you. Okay, yeah. Pretty short patch. Not much in it. What's my run time? 24 minutes? All right. So, overall... I wouldn't say any bad changes, kind of some useless changes, <laughs> useless changes right here, and um, some good ones, so, some decent ones, like Lulu was pretty decent, Yi was extreme, okay, you know, because the Yi one, and here's what I'll do, this patch was decent, nothing bad, some useless, some good, 7 out of 10 Mark Miles, I hope you guys enjoyed, I'm getting the fuck out of here because I got a lot to do, later.